Bless God. Bless God. All right, I just want to share in this delivery on the thought positioned for, well, by design. Positioned by design. Or you could say you are positioned by design. Say to someone, you are positioned by design. Turn to another person and say, you are positioned by design. Glory to God. Another synonym we could use is placement by design. But I will work with positioned by design. Now, I honestly believe by faith that a number of persons throughout the nations of the earth will be encouraged by this delivery. For those who are already in the kingdom, you'll be encouraged. And for those who are new to the body of Christ, I really want to encourage you to really take hold of what I'm going to share with you. And I believe by faith, it will aid and abet your manifestation and also aid and abet your journey in the kingdom of God. Now, we have discovered as we go through the Bible that there have been persons in the Bible who we may call on errol eras. We don't necessarily see them as eras. But we notice that they were in strategic positioning throughout the Bible or throughout a certain environment. And these persons have aided and abet uh, the manifestation of people's lives. And a number of these persons we celebrate in the Bible when we read the stories. So let's start with Proverbs 4, verse 7. Proverbs 4, verse 7, which is an important scripture to guide our thoughts and deliberation. And I deliberately want to start with Proverbs 4, 7, as we talk about position by design. Position by design. You are positioned by design. As we talk about it, I want to start with Proverbs 4, 7. And Proverbs 4, 7, reading thus. Verse 7. The beginning of wisdom is, get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. And with all you have gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. Bless God. Wisdom is the principal thing. In all you're getting, get knowledge, get understanding. As we are in the kingdom of God, for those who are already born again believers, we have gone through journeys and we have discovered that we've been, well, how do I say this? We have discovered a number of us, including the speaker, would have needed wisdom in different seasons of his or her life. We have discovered that sometimes we're in an environment, sometimes we're in a, a job, employment, but we don't necessarily comprehend the reason why we're in that role. And because we don't necessarily comprehend the reason why we are in that role, our position, we end up complaining. We end up murmuring. And we end up, we end up aborting that environment before time. And so I honestly believe that, based on what will come out of my mouth in this delivery, that it will encourage persons who would have already gone through a certain journey. And likewise, it will encourage those who are new to the kingdom of God. So as I was alluding earlier on, throughout the Bible, we discovered there were persons who were just basically in certain roles, position, environment. And they don't seem to be important people. But certainly, what they did or say allowed the outcome in the Bible to be pleasing. So, we look at, for example, um, Naaman. We celebrate the Naaman story. Naaman, as you know, was a man, mighty man of valor, but leprous. And he went to the man of God, and the man of God to told him to dip seven times. But interestingly, in Naaman's household, his wife had a maid. And when the maid became aware of the master's situation, the maid recommended to the wife that she could take her husband to a certain environment where there's a man of God. But yet, we don't necessarily celebrate that maid who gave the advice, who gave the counsel. No, we must celebrate the fact that Naaman's skin became like baby. That maid was very instrumental to that awesome miracle. 
And there are many of us in the kingdom who don't necessarily realize how important we are in the kingdom. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, we don't necessarily recognize how precious we are based on the roles, the position, wherever we are in the kingdom, wherever we are in the workplaces, wherever we are in our communities. I put it to you, I suggest to you that you are so precious and your role is so important that if God really, if you really comprehend how important your role and position is, you'll value life even more. We look at the Bible, we celebrate Joseph. We celebrate how, come, how Joseph went to Egypt. And of course, over a certain series and period of time, Joseph became prime minister of Egypt. And yes, we, 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 we take comfort and we allude how that was awesome. But yet, we don't necessarily take time out to recognize that when Joseph was leaving his father to look for his brother, of course, the brothers, of course, wanted us to kill him. I was en they were en route and designing to kill him. Uh, and we all know the story, the backdrop to that. But from his father going to his, looking for his brother, there was a man, oh, the Bible said a certain man. There was a certain man. I love that. It, it, the Bible never gave him a name. But the Bible said there was a certain man. And of course, that certain man guided Joseph or gave him direction. And through that direction, Joseph ended up in Egypt over a certain series, ended up into his destiny. Hallelujah. We don't celebrate that certain man. We don't celebrate that certain man. Glory to God. So I'm saying to you, you're going to be in some environment where nobody celebrates you. <laughs> Glory. But because you, you may not be seen as any valuable in individual or maybe the position, you may be aligned staff in a work context or so, or in a community, you may not be a, a what do we call a era leader or so on. But what comes out of your mouth or what you do, there's a probability that it will transition a community. It will transition a nation. It will transform a person's life. I was en route today during the rain, a lot of rain fell today. And while I came off the main road, I'm seeking an alternate route. Um, uh, <laughs> I had to stop at a, at a gate. And while I stopped at the gate, I heard a voice sound like a grandma, you know, uh, you know. And I heard an elder lady praying, interceding, interceding for the community, interceding for the nation interceding for our family and so on. And I said, wow, this lady will never be known as any nation changer. This lady will never be celebrated. But who knows if her prayer stops someone from going to prison in this season? Who knows? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I want you to take value in who you are in Christ Jesus. But I'm going to bring it to another level because sometimes as born again believers, we, we, we take for granted where God has positioned us. And I don't want you to make the mistakes that many and I have made along the way, one way or the other, whether you want to admit it or not. And so I want to lift the conversation and bring it to a point of saying, okay, for those who are coming into the kingdom of God, don't make the mistakes that many of us have made. And for many of us who are already in the kingdom, let's start afresh. Let us... Let us start to value our placement. Hallelujah. Even when we ourselves don't fully comprehend why we're in that environment. So we're going to lift the conversation to that point. So my thought process for those who are joining, I was waiting for you. Yes, man, I was waiting until you left work, reached home from work. Yes, yes, you there, I was waiting until you came out of the kitchen. Yes, I was waiting for you. Now I'm going to release the word of God over you. Yes, show the nations of the earth in the right place at the right time. And we have a person, pastor, we welcome you to this broadcast. And we celebrate your connection to this global purpose-driven ministry. Put your hands together for those who are joining in. Yes! yes. Mm. 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 You are positioned for by design. You are positioned by design. Glory to God. Let's go over to 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings 17 verses 1 to 6. 1 Kings 17 verses 1 to 6. I'm very excited about verse 4. But we'll read 
1 Kings 17 verses 1 to 6. You are positioned by design. By design. You are positioned by design. 1 Kings chapter 17 verses 1 to 6. Reading thus. Verse 1. Elijah the Tishbite of the temporal residence of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be you or rain these years, but according to my word. Verse 2. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Verse 3. Go from here and turn east, and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, east of the Jordan. Verse 4. You shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you. There, verse 5. So he did according to the word of the Lord. He went and dwelt by the, book, the brook Sherith, east of the Jordan. Verse 6. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank from the brook. Glory to God. Let's read verse 4 for emphasis. Bless God. Verse 4 for emphasis. Verse 4. You shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. All right. Go over to Psalm 75, verse 6. Psalm 75, verse 6. Glory to God. So verse 4 says, God has commanded you, O Father, to go to a place called there. There's a place called there. Brothers and sisters who are listening to the nations of the earth, those who are new, as long as you're connected to the body of Christ, as long as you're born again believer, be comforted, be assured, be convinced that there's a place called there. Say there's a place called there. Say there's a place called there. The enemy knows that there's a place called there. The enemy knows that in the economy of things, there's a place called there for the born-again believer. And because the enemy knows that there's a place called there, oftentimes when you are there, he allows different things to happen to give the impression as if you're not there. But in this case now, hallelujah, God said there's a place called there. In this case, the book of Sherid was where the man was sustained. There's a place for you to be sustained. Glory to God. There's a place for you to be encouraged. Yes, man. There's a place for you to be resourced. There's a place. There's an environment. Hallelujah. There's a country. That whenever you're in that country, sufficiency will come to you. Say, I receive. I receive. I said, there's a place called there. Say, I receive. I receive. Oh, whatever is going on in your life, be encouraged that the sovereign God has created an environment, created a placement, created strategically somewhere called there to sustain you, to keep you, to flourish you, hallelujah, to promote you. Say, there's a place called there. There's a place called there. Say, I receive. I receive. I receive. I, receive. I go into my place called there. Oh, my father, there's provision there. So I receive my provision. I receive my provision. When do you receive it? No. When do you receive it? No, no man, you're not, no, 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 you're not convinced. You're not convinced. Oh, no, you're not convinced, man. You're responding like the weather earlier today. I said, when have you received a place called there? No. Oh, I'm not convinced. I said, so when do you receive a place called there? There's sufficiency there. There's, <laughs> there's provision there. There's encouragement there. There's security there. There's prosperity there. There's health there. There's relationship there. There's promotion there. There's contract there. Hallelujah. There's movements there. There's shifting there. And you're now at the place called there. You are important there. So I receive my dear. Glory to God. Psalm 75 verse 6. Let's run the track now. Glory to God. You are positioned by design. Psalm 75 verse 6. Read it thus. Verse 6. For not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south comes promotion and lifting up. 
Oh, that's the Amplified Virgin. That's the Amplified Virgin. I come to say to you in this broadcast that you are strategically, you are strategically positioned by design. You are strategically positioned by design. As long as you are a born-again believer, if you are new in the kingdom of God, you hear me well and listen to me. If you are new to the body of Christ, whenever you call out unto God, pray and petition, so and also serve him. Promotion has to come to you. Placement has to come to you. Open doors has to come to you. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Because Matthew, Matthew, um, Matthew tells us, glory to God. Matthew 7 tells us that if evil men, Matthew 7, 11 says, if evil men knows how to give good gifts, how much more God himself will give unto you his own children. If evil men know to take care, take care of you, if evil men know how to make you feel good and nice, if even men know to even give sufficiency, how much more God himself will do that and more. I'm talking to someone in this broadcast. I'm talking to someone in this anointed environment. Somebody who feels as if things are not going the way they should. Somebody who feels as if the end of circle, at the end of the road. You'll be encouraged as long as you're a born again believer. God himself is looking forward to bless you. He's looking forward to favor you. He's looking forward to shape up things for you. And in this broadcast, I want you to understand when it comes. I want you to in internalize and do not abuse it and do not depreciate it. I want you to, when it comes, when promotion comes, when blessings come, when favor comes, when open doors come and open windows come, how you understand why it has come and you become a steward of that. I say, as long as you are born again believer, especially if you are new to the kingdom, God will always show up. He's going to show up to encourage you in a baby stage. He's going to show up to let you know that he's your sufficiency. He'll supply all your needs. Our country rich, is riches in glory through Christ Jesus. you got to understand that he will hear your faintest cry. He will answer by and by. He said, call on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 32, 27. He said, am I not the God of all mankind? Glory to God. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I sense in this broadcast that those who are calling upon the Lord need to hear this message in this delivery. God has not forsaken you. God has not forgotten you. He's putting things in place to bless you. Say, I receive. I receive. Glory to God. Say, I receive. I receive. My father, my father, I say you are strategically positioned by design. Wherever you are, believe it or not, it doesn't look so in most cases, but you are strategically positioned. The King James Version says in Psalm 75, 6, that promotion comet, it's a promotion comet. It's a promotion comet. It's a promotion is coming. It's coming to me. Promotion is on my way. It's on, my, it's on its way to me. It shall find me. I have, I have a website. It shall log on to my website. I have, I have an email. It shall find my email. Find my email. So promotion is coming to me. Is coming to me. Favor, is coming to me. Favor is coming to me. Blessings coming to me. Coming to me. Joy, is coming to me. Joy is coming to me. Angels and assignment to favor me. You don't get me, don't get me, don't get me, don't get me, don't get me. I said, God is shaping up things to bless you and to favor you. Say, so I, I receive. You better get excited, better get excited, better get excited. So not how the rain fell. Blessings are going to flow your way because God has no choice but to bless his people. So promotion is coming to me. And it's finding me now. When? Now. When? Now. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. If you believe, give God praise. <laughs> so we're talking about you are positioned by what? By design. You are positioned by design. Psalm 75, 6 says, Promotion cometh neither from the east, nor the west, nor from the south. The living Bible says, For promotion and power. Come from nowhere on earth, but only from God. But only from where? 
from only from where? God. He promotes one and he disposes of another. Oh, my father, I won't go into that. I won't go into that. Well, maybe not as yet. Hallelujah to God. The voice Bible says, there is no one on earth who can raise up another to grant honor. The voice Bible says, there's no one on earth who can raise up another to grant honor. Not from the east, nor the west, not from the desert. There is no one. The voice Bible said, there's no one. Hear this now. God is the only one. Glory to God. Rabbis, I'm talking to someone, you know. I talk, you know, sir over there. I sense that I'm talking to you, you know. Sir over there. I sense that I'm talking to you, you know. I sense that I'm talking to you. I say, there is no one else, hallelujah, that can raise you up except God. Yes, amen, amen. And wherever you are is no coincidence. If I have time, I draw a revelation. Hallelujah. I said, there is no one on earth can raise up another. Oh, Father, I grant honor. Only God himself. Say, God is going to honor me. God is going to honor me. God is blessing me. God is blessing me. God is going to promote me. God is expanding me. Because I'm positioned by design. I'm positioned by design. Say, I receive. I receive. When? No. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are positioned by design. Now, in St. In John chapter 1, verses, well, verse 46. Let's use one scripture there. St. John 1, verse 46. There's an uncommon question that is asked, which a number of you watching this broadcast and listen to this delivery, you might ask yourself, Oh, Father, is this question being asked of me? In St. John 1, 46, the question is asked, because I'm talking about promotion, I'm talking about expansion, I'm talking about placement by design, and there are some persons, wherever you are, there's nothing to be joyful about. Wherever you are, you're there wondering where God is in all of this. Well, if I trust, if I really flow by the Holy Spirit and finish at a certain time, then I believe that this message will bring clarity. Hallelujah for you. Glory to God. So John 1 46 says, reading thus, hear the powerful question. Verse 46. Nathaniel answered him, Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip replied, come and see. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The King James Virgin said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Oh, my father, my father. So I'm talking about your position from design. I'm talking about promotion coming. And promotion is coming. Expansion is coming. Favor is coming. But the question is being asked in that season, in this season. It's being asked of you. Can anything good come out of you? My father, my father. There are some persons looking at you and say, Can any good thing come out of you? Oh, Father, they heard your story. They got a clip on the star. Hallelujah. It's just one page you read, and they already written it off. And it said, based on your background, oh, Father, based on your family inheritance, based on your family lineage, based on your generation, based on your broken relationships, based on what you have gone through, you listen to the nations of the earth. Persons are asking, can any good thing come out of you? Can any good thing come out of your circumstances? Because as far as they're concerned, there's no way your story can change. There's no way God can promote you. There's no more God can turn the circumstances around. But I come to say that God specializes in things that seems impossible God specializes to take person broken story and mend them and fix them and pick them up and turn them around and plant their feet on solid ground hallelujah to God can any good thing come out of you I come to say yes oh father hallelujah to God as long as Christ is in the vessel he will smile at the sun Oh, come on, yes, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Something good is coming out of you. Something good will come out of you. Yes, man. Yes, man. God is going to position you. And he's going to promote you. And he's going to expand you. Hallelujah to God. I recall, uh, yes, when I went into high school at about 11 years old. Well, I passed common entrance at 10 plus. 
I, I was placed in high school at 10 plus. Hallelujah to God. I won't go deep into that. Bless God. And they had a boarding house at my high school. And on the, board, at the boarding house is a big map. Hallelujah. Big Jamaican map showing the districts and the town areas and the communities. Hallelujah to God. And they just took it as a joyful mockery to call me. Number one, my height never qualified for that high school. So that alone was making me a laughing stock. Hallelujah to God. Secondly, they call me. And it's a call Christian, I live here. Call Christian, that classmate live there. Call Christian, show me where you live. Show me where you live. On the big Jamaican map, I couldn't identify a community. Because where I live was not on the map. Rakashaka, Robosata. Who am I talking to? Hallelujah. Who am I talking to? Some of you work in some place. You can't tell anybody that you work in there. You know, let me not go there. Let me focus on me. Hello. Where I live was not on the map. They turned me into a mockery. Oh, call Christian. We live here. Such and such live there. Where do you live? Show us where you live. So this scripture, John 1, 46, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Rabba Sando Robo Shata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Where I live was not on the map, but I've seen where something good has come out of that community. Something that was thrown away, someone that was thrown away, someone who was mocked and spurned. God centered that person's life and changed his story. Hallelujah. Let me just leave this with you. I told myself, I may not have been on the map. Where I live may not be on the map. But I'm going to invent you my skills. I'm going to invent you my ability. And I'm going to be the best at it. My father, my father. Hallelujah. I wasn't tall enough. Glory to God. To see most of the, the school boards. So I, I was getting the A's as yet. But I was someone who was not afraid of a cricket ball. They were all the other town boys them were running away from the cricket ball. I just went with my country hands and stopped the cricket ball. Oh, Father, 40 miles, I just stopped them. Yes, man, that alone got me on the cricket team. Guess what now? They made me the opening batsman. Not because I could bat, but because I wasn't afraid of the ball. Hallelujah. To, the next thing you know, I'm the opening batsman for the team. The next thing you know, I'm the opening batsman for the parish. The next thing you know, I'm the opening batsman at national. Wow. Because something good yes, sir. Yes, sir. can come out of you yes, yes. when God intervenes. Yes. The angel turn up. Oh my, what was to teach? I want was to teach. The angel turn up in Judges 6. Oh, so many scriptures I have. The, judge, the, 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 the angel turn up in Judges 6. Glory to God. You run over there in Judges 6. And said, man of valor. Thou art a mighty man of valor. Oh, Father. Like the God is saying, he's going to promote some of you. And some of you have no revelation to accept it because you're there saying can any good come out of my circumstances can my story change god is saying i'm going to allow your marriage to be blessed <laughs> oh carl where are you going down there oh father with a burden are you there saying how could that be when the doctor's report say otherwise oh my father my father hallelujah oh this word is saying god is going to expand you educationally and you're there saying, oh, can that be when I never finish high school with enough subjects? Oh, my father, my father. You're there saying, how can anything good come out of me? The Spirit of God is saying, you will be in a quality relationship in the future. Are you there saying, but every relationship I go into, it's self-destruct. How could that thing be? Like the Virgin Mary. Mary said, I do not know of a man. How could this thing be? But God specializes in what seems impossible. Can anything good come out of your circumstances? Yes! Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Judges 6, 11 and 12. 
We just met our appetite there. Because this is a Bible church. So if we just draw scriptures. Ah, look at the rate I'm going. I might just preach out this thing. My father, my father. Hallelujah. Judges 6 verses 11 and 12. Reading thus. Verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak turbines at Orpha, which belonged to Josh, the Abizrite, and his son Gideon was beating wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. Verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of fearless courage. Verses 14 and 15. King James Virgin said, Thou mighty man of valor. And verses 14 and 15. Look what's happening here now. Hallelujah. Verse, Reading thus. Verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in this your might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? Verse 15, Gideon said to him, O Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Behold, my clan is the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Oh, like many of us, we're full of excuses. Where they're saying, God, there's no way my circumstances can change. There's no way what you say, you're saying, I'm, I'm a mighty man of God. I'm a mighty man of God. You're there saying that I'm a manager. I'm going to be a manager in my environment. And I'm just a line staff presently. I'm not even on staff. And you're there saying, God, how could this thing be? In this case, the angel turned up to respond to Gideon and said, you are a mighty man of God. You are a mighty man of God. Gideon said, there's no way I am mighty. I'm the least. My tribe is the least. My family has no pedigree. There's no way. There's no way my, I can I'm talking about you are positioned by design. You are positioned. You may be the least. Hallelujah. You may be looked down on. Persons may not give you the credence. But you have got to understand. God sees in you what he already created. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. You see your brokenness? You see your fracturedness? But God sees the wholeness. Whoa. Oh, that's deep. Yes, yes, yes. That's deep. You've been broken and fractured. I, I love this scenario. Because when you read the Bible, thousands of fight different armies. Yes. But when you check the Bible, this very Gideon who said, there's no way I'm a mighty man of valor. There's no way my story can change. There's no way God you can use me. Because I'm not from a family of pedigree. Mm. I love this story yeah. because when we read the Bible, this very man who said, listen, I'm not a man of valor. There's no way it's possible for me and sorry to transform. The Bible tells us it was this very same man who ended up beating a army of thousands with only 300 men. Glory to God. It's not your skill set. Right. It's not your acumen. Right. Right. It's not your degrees like me. Right. I have more degrees than temperature. And that doesn't cut it for me. What cut it is the anointing. What cut it is the word of God that comes out of your, your mouth. What cut it is when you're obedient. As long as God says it, that settles it. God said you are a mighty woman of God. You're a mighty man of God. Then that's a done deal. That's a done deal. I finished high school with one single subject. This very Lord came and said, DR, you shall be DR. Like Gideon, I said, how oh, could this thing be? My father, how can one somebody who finished high school with one subject? This brother God is now saying, DR, you shall have DR. How can you wrap your head around it? Your responsibility is not to wrap your head around it. Your responsibility is just to believe it. Just to accept it. And in due season, and in due timing, Akata. Have a way of talking in tongues. I want to cut it, but I just cannot help it in this season. Because since God has transformed you, since God has turned the circumstances around, he who has brought it this far, is more than able to bring you behind whatever brokenness, whatever circumstances. I come to stop by to say, God is positioning you by design to change your family, to change your company, to change your community. To change our very nation is not impossible. Right, right. 
You on your own can't do it. You on your own can't do it. Thank God. You'd have wrecked any nation. You'd have wrecked any relationship. You'd have wrecked any company and mash up any church. So thank God on your own. You can't do it. But when you say, okay, God, not my will, but thy will be done. Oh, my father, my father. My father, my father. Throughout the Bible, God uses, God identifies persons and do wonders through them. Especially when they are from no quality background. Before your promotion, you had people like David in, in, in 1 Samuel 9.3. Let me run it fast. In 1 Samuel 9.3. Hallelujah. You have Saul. Oh, tall he was in natural um, um, disposition. But all he was doing at that time of his life was... <laughs> I, I can't be used. Okay, okay. That's what the Bible says. All he was doing at that time of his life was going, looking after his father's asset. Glory to God. His father's asset. Hallelujah to God. Read 1 Samuel 9 verse 3. Verse 3. The donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. Kish said to Saul, take a servant with you and go look for the donkeys. This is Saul. All he was doing was looking about his father's asset. He was attending. He was just doing a menial thing. So that is Saul. Hallelujah. Let's go over to 1 Samuel 16, verse 11. Onwards. Here now you have David. Look at what he was doing before God intervened in his life. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 11 and 15. So Saul, as tall as he was, son of Kish, he was attending to his father's um, asset. Oh, father. He was, he was of no necessity at the time. Glory to God. Before God intervened. And here now in 1 Samuel 16, verses 11 onwards, reading thus. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Then he said to Jesse, are all these your sons here? Jesse said, there is yet the youngest. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him, for we will not sit down to eat until he is here. Verse 12. Jesse sent and brought him. David had a healthy, reddish complexion and beautiful eyes, and he was fine looking. The Lord said to Samuel, Arise, anoint him, that is he. Verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. All right. Let's go over to Genesis 41. Genesis 41, starting from the 38th verse. Genesis 41, starting from the 38th verse. So the previous um, references, Saul, he was just attending to his father's asset. In the case of David, David was just attending. He was basically a farmer, attending to the sheep. One, sheep. One, in some country, a, a, those who are shepherds, he's really seen as a farmer. So he was not of any quality background before God intervened. Who am I talking to the nations of the earth? They were just doing ordinary menial things before God intervened. So when I'm talking about you are positioned by design, on the surface it doesn't look so. It doesn't look so. We heard about Esther and we celebrate how Esther stood in the gap for a whole nation. But Esther was just an orphan. She was an orphan being taken care of by her uncle, Mordecai. She was just a teenage lass, or young miss lass at the time. There was a notable about these persons. That was their life before God intervened. Solomon, as we, we celebrate apostles, uh, um, 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 well, let me leave that alone. I was going to say etc., but it's not going to come in context. So Solomon, of course, we celebrate him for wisdom. But the truth of the matter is, Solomon's parents connived to, to murder. Hallelujah. To murder, oh my father, his parents connived to murder a man. Oh. <laughs> yes, his mother was in, in, in sync with it because, because of her hatty, hatty, hatty body that caused David to look over the arm, um, <coughs> to look from a high place. It's when you're tall, you see a lot of things, you know. If you're at my height, all you see is the, is the video recorder, the, the camera. Glory to God. So we celebrate Solomon, but his parents connived. And so, in fact, the, his parents participate in murder. 
of murder. So what am I saying now is that there are persons we celebrate throughout the Bible, but when we check their background before God intervened, they had no credibility. And a number of you listen to this broadcast. And for those of you who will listen to repeat if you get that privilege. Oh, Father, glory to God. You will understand from the angle I'm coming from. I'm coming from an angle to say, whatever was your state, whatever is your state, you are a prime candidate for God to adjust, for God to shift, for God to expand, for God to promote, for God to bless. Yeah. You're a prime candidate yeah, yeah, for yeah. God to do the supernatural. Yeah. You're a prime candidate yeah. for God to position you in an interesting manner to transform your context, transform your nation, transform your yeah. the business, yeah. transform the institution, transform the organization, transform trans Amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. So that, that, that was their scenario and disposition before God intervened. But look here now. Let's go to Genesis 41, verses 38 to an appointed verse. And now I'm going to, I'm going to put forth the view that now we are now elevated. Hallelujah. Now we are now elevated. So before we were nothing. Before you were nothing of credibility and authority. But here God intervened, my father. Hallelujah. Oh, my father. Genesis 41, verses 38 to a pointed verse. Reading thus. Verse 38. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find this man's equal, a man in whom the Spirit of God? Verse 39. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, For as much as your God has shown you all this, there is nobody as intelligent and discreet and understanding and wise as you are. Verse 40. You shall have charge over my house, and all my people shall be governed according to your word with reverence, submission, and obedience. Only in matters of the throne will I be greater than you are. Verse 41. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Verse 42. And Pharaoh took off his signet ring from his hand, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in official vestments of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Forty-three and last. Verse forty-three. He made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and officials cried before him, "Bow the knee!" And he set him over all the land of Egypt. Glory to God, go over Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1, verses 19 to an appointed verse. Daniel chapter 1, verses 19 to an appointed verse. So here we celebrate, oh Father, how God intervened in Joseph's life. Oh my Father, I love this, I love this, I love this. God intervened and Joseph now has now been promoted to prime minister of Egypt. He's now second in command. But yet when we examine Joseph's background, the young man was sold, oh my father. The young man was no, sold as a prisoner, well, as a slave. He was enslaved. And the Bible had the audacity to say in the midst of his enslavement, the Bible had the audacity to say that God was with him. God was with him. God was with him. I'm talking to someone throughout the nations of the earth. It seemed like you're in enslavement right now. It seems that the environment you're in is one of enslavement, financial enslavement, emotional enslavement. Oh, my father, physical enslavement. There's some person there in some circumstances. If we ever get a chance to read their situation, you will say, my father, my father, what is this? But I come to say to you, like Joseph, you may be imprisoned. Like Joseph, you may be enslaved. Like Joseph, you may be placed in a situation that you never volunteer for. But be encouraged that the word of God says, God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be downcast. If there's a beginning, there must be an end. I come to say to somebody, you're coming out of that in the name of Jesus. 
God will provide a way of escape. You may not know how. You may not know when. But surely God will show up. He'll show up strong and mighty. He will show up. He'll show up. Jesus turned up on the water. And he showed up beside Peter's boat. And he said, come, come, come. He said, Peter, come. I said, God is going to say, come. Step out of the boat. Step out of the boat of adversity. Step out of the boat of imprisonment. Step out of the boat of don't cast. Take out of the boat of depression. Step out of the boat. Step it out. Step out. Come on. There's going to be deliverance. There's going to be victory. There's going to be a turnaround. Have every confidence that God is going to promote. God is going to shift. Some persons, hallelujah, may not understand your value. Some persons may not understand what is on you. But God sees it and he turns things around in his own season, in his own time. Can you imagine Joseph is in prison? One year, no breakthrough, no deliverance. Two years, no release. Somebody, you're in circumstances right now. You prayed, you fasted, and it seemed as there no way out. But the Bible said, in due season, God is going to show up. He's going to come part your Red Sea. He's going to part your River Jordan. Have every confidence that he's going to let fear have a dream which only you can interpret. Someone will send and call for you. My father, my father, you may have been wrong. Oh, oh, oh. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I never plan to go down this road. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You may have been thrown out like in Judges 11. Jephthah father had him out of wedlock and when he showed up the family member says your mother is of no pedigree Agree. So you got to leave the household. They throw Jephthah out of the household. They say you shall get no inheritance. But two years after, when there was war upon the tribe, who did they send for? The very one that was thrown off. The very Jephthah that was cast away. Someone in the family is going to send for you. They have a financial problem. Who they going to send for? They have some documents to the right. Who they going to send for? Oh God, somebody want to go overseas. Who they going to send for? My father, my father. My father, my father. The very same person that was cast away. is the same one that God allowed them to have to turn to. To smile a while. Give your face a rest. God is not true with you yet. And when he gets true with you, you're going to come forth like pure gold. You've been positioned for greatness. Positioned by design. You shall see the fullness of the Lord. I come in the spirit of John the Baptist. I come in the spirit of a person, pastor. And I come to say to somebody, you shall be elevated. You shall be elevated. You shall be elevated. Glory to God. Genesis 50, 20 says, What the devil meant for evil. What the devil meant for evil. What the co-worker meant for evil. What the manager meant for evil. What your boss meant for evil. What your company meant for evil. What your institution meant for evil. What your era leader meant for evil. What your lecturer meant for evil. What your best friend meant for evil. What your partner meant for evil. The very partner you sleep beside. The very partner you talk with. What they meant for evil. Genesis 50 20 says, God is going to turn to things around. He, what it meant for evil, God is going to turn it around for good. He's going to turn it around for good. He's going to turn your sickness around. Amen. 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 You may be sad right now. You may be discouraged right now. You may have a malady or infirmity right now. You might have a business decision right now to do. But God is going to turn that around. He's going to turn it in his due season and due time. He's going to shift. He's going to shift. He's going to... Oh, my father. From the prison to the prime minister.
Potiphar's house. No man can promote you from the pit to a prime minister's house. No, men might like you, women might like you, people might say they like you, but Psalm 75 6 says, No human being can promote you. Only God can promote you. And when He promotes you, there's no question about it. Because Him pick you from the lowest of the lowest and put you to the highest of the highest. Say, I receive. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah to God. I don't want to get carried away because I have to leave this, this observation. In the midst of my humping and pumping, I have to leave this observation. I have to leave this observation. In Daniel 1, 19 to 21, the Bible says Daniel stood before the king. The point I'm making, the very the very person that was crucified by those around him was the very person that had the privilege to be in the presence of the king. So I receive. I receive. Those of you in the workplaces, my father, my father, those who are in organization, you might be in line staff role, but the season will come when an issue or a problem will face management and who they're going to stand for. So I don't want to, you to, I want to get this point, especially for those in the kingdom who have sowed seeds and those who are in the kingdom and ask God to come true and God supernaturally position you in uncommon jobs. I want you to hear me now because sometimes we make the mistake to believe that where we are is based on our ability only. All right now, I have a couple of degrees, and I wouldn't be surprised if I venture out of my present um, 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 assignment. That I will fool myself that the reason why I'm in a certain environment is because of the temperatures I have. That's what education does. It makes us feel as if we are the real deal. And I'm going to talk strong now. Because we're making a big mistake in the kingdom. When God places us into roles and positions, and let me use a job as scenario, the employment role especially. We, we sometimes seek a man of God, a woman of God, the man of God, woman of God prayed, released, breakthrough, contract. We're in that role. And at first we're excited. And at first we, we testify, oh God is good. But after a while, we lose sight of who brought us into that role. We lose sight of who placed us in those roles or positions. We, we, we lose sight. All right now. And then now, the next point I want to make is that sometimes we experience things in those environments, in those roles, in those positions. And we, we are ignorant of the reason why we go and experience those things. Now, right now. And there are some of us losing. I have to be careful here now. There are some of us being displaced from strategic positions and roles in the nations, in the kingdom, uh, you know, in, in, in our communities, our organizations we're involved in. And we don't understand why we're being displaced. And we're blaming God. So let me just release this now. Glory to God. To say, okay now, in Numbers, in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10. In Numbers chapter 2, verse 10. Let's read Numbers chapter 2, verse 10. Reading us. Verse 10. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben by their companies. The leader of the sons of Reuben being Eliza, Eliza, son of Shidar. Nehemiah 2, verse 10. Okay, now. Let's flow, let's flow, let's flow. Let's flow, let's flow. 
So I want to make the point now that you are positioned by design. You are positioned by design. Say, I am positioned. I am positioned. By, design. by design. Those through the nations of the earth say, I am positioned. I am positioned. By, design. by design. Now, in the case of this uncommon man of God, and I elaborate um, um, down the road, I want to just indicate, especially for clarity, that as long as you are placed, especially by the Spirit of God, about the plans and purposes of God in any environment, in any organization, in, in any work scenario or otherwise, in any school system or otherwise. You want to listen to me carefully now. You have to understand. You have to comprehend. You have to relate. You have to accept that being opposed, listen now, going deep now, being opposed is a natural expectation. Okay now, as long as God position you <laughs> in an environment, in an organization, in a community, in a community, because there's some communities that have witches and warlocks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. oh, Father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Father. I'm going somewhere now. And sometimes we are strategically positioned to be the salt of that environment, to be the light of that environment. But we end up complaining, complaining, complaining. Okay, now, so get this revelation or this understanding that as long as God position us in an environment, organization, institution, school system, you name it, or otherwise, being opposed is a natural expectation. Opposition is natural. You will always be opposed. Let us not super, let us not, let us not try to spiritualize this thing. As long as you are God anointed and appointed, you are in the environment, but you're not of the environment. So your values will not be like everybody else. So you are going to be opposed. You are going to be challenged. The pangs of hell, the, the, the realm of dark realm, going to oppose, oppose. Oh, my father. Oh, my father, born again believers, you need to understand what I'm saying to you, you know. That your placement automatically attracts opposition. So I want you to remove your nipple buckle. I want you to remove your soother. I don't want to promote any baby feeding. I want you to come off of the breast. And stop the crying. Stop the moping. Stop the complaining. Yes, 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 yes. And sing the song. Yes. The harder they come. Yes. It's the more they fall. Yes. War. 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 As long as God placed you in an environment, you cannot be a baby. No. You cannot be a cry cry baby. No. Oh my father, my father. Opposition will come. Yes. The enemy will oppose you. Yes. Witchcraft will oppose you. Nicomancy will oppose you. Those in lodges will oppose you. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. There's some position you have to be in some clubs to be in that. So when God places you in some position, you got to understand you shall attract opposition. But it shall come one way and flee many ways. God is appointed the vice of the crafty. So they will not perform. They shall not perform. They shall not perform. They shall not. They shall not. They shall not perform. Their enterprise. The mistake we're making in these workplaces is that we're allowing them to perform their enterprise we are allowing the dark world and the realms of the dark world to perform their enterprise because we were being placed strategically as a salt and the light <laughs> we are more complaining we are moping 
We see ourselves as victims instead of conquerors. But we are more than conquerors, I receive. So I receive. So I receive. The Sambalats will come. The Tobias will come. The Eamons will come. They will create gallows. They will dig pit. But the very gallows that they create, <laughs> the very ropes that they put up, they see them one shall be hanged with it. They dig a pit for you. Why am I getting so militant? I think because a pastor is not around. Right? If he's around, he's not saying a word. Why am I getting so militant? If they dig one pit January, if they meet dig one February, you have some workplaces, they're in gangs. Hakata, Robo. They're in gangs, they smile with you, Pachakin. Mashando Robo. But behind your back, they criticize you, they sus you. Manda Koto, Rabba, Sanda. But tell them that the man of God say, any great, like I said, any pick them. Any pit that I'm digging for the born again believer, especially a tree with height, any tree with height in the house. Oh, my father, if ever a time you got to wear a war boat, it's in those workplaces where the snakes and scorpions. I have, to find a way to, I have to find a way to finish this thing. Glory to God. I say, any pit that they're digging for the born again believer. You hear me well. They shall fall in it. Any gallows. Any gallows. Any gallows, right. gallows right. Man, Shando. Yes, 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 my father, my father, my father. Abba, 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 father. Abba, 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 Father, my Father. My Father is upon me. My Father is upon me. My Father, my Father is upon me. Oh my God. I have to finish this. I have to find a way to finish it. You hear me well. The earmans them shall be rewarded. I, I, I honestly believe that I'm talking to some people. Show the nations heard. I'm looking into our office right now. I'm looking into our office right now. Your cabinet is your cabinet. Your, your cabinet is metal. It's on the right. Oh Father, it's on the right side. Oh Father, your desk is in the middle. My father, my father, you place a laptop in the middle. There's a small, there's a small fridge in your office. AC, of course. And there is the blind blinders. The blood is for the windows. You hear me well. You better be careful. Tomorrow, listen. Tomorrow morning, when you go to office, oh Father, before you step in, you just plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Because you don't know what they're sprinkling. You don't know what that's. But we destroy the device of the crafty. Yes, sir. 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 The airman shall be rewarded. The airman shall be rewarded. The Tobias shall be rewarded. The Sambalat shall be rewarded. If they're touching a Jewry fight who has been placed in, a, in an environment that they're designed to be the head, not the tail. Tell those who oppose you that the spirit of the Lord is upon you. You're going back to your workplace tomorrow morning to conquer, to conquer, to conquer. You're going back to take authority. You're going back to be the victors I receive. I receive. Mm. Jesus. 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 My God, my God, my God. My father, my father, my father. My father, my father, my father. Abba, 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 Abba. Abba, glory to God. No, I, I don't want this to get lost in my excitement, in my youthful exuberance. I don't want this to get lost. So let me go strong and close off. You are positioned by design. Say, I am positioned. I am positioned. By design. By design. No, a number of you have sold seeds and gotten a breakthrough and gotten jobs. And some of you are losing it. And you're blaming God. Hallelujah. 
One of the mistakes you're making, you have no idea why you're in that position. You thought it was your degrees. You thought it was your personality. You thought it was your, your, your resume that got you there. But you were positioned. You were strategically positioned. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hear the revelation now. You were strategically positioned to promote and to advance the plans and purposes of the one who gave you the promotion. Yes, yes, sir. Oh, my father. Yes, Let me say that one more time. You were promoted. You were positioned. You were placed. You were to advance the plans and purposes of the one who gave the promotion. <laughs> the one who gave the placement. And there are many of us in the church system when God blesses and favors us or the man of God or woman of God release a breakthrough of our lives. We don't comprehend that we're dear to advance the plans and purposes. There's some persons when they get managerial jobs, there's no one from the church system that will get a job in that organization. None. Hallelujah. Not one. Hallelujah. And if anyone in the church system gets a job in that environment, it's a menial work. It's a line staff work. There's some persons who are being positioned to favor the body of Christ. Yes. To improve the body of Christ. To advance the body of Christ. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes. People are strategically positioned in the nation. In, 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 listen, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Hello. And, 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 and they're not bringing others to the top. They're not bringing their brothers to the top. Not their sisters to the top. The only person they might get a job for is somebody to clean. And guess what they want them to clean? They want the sister to come and clean the office. You know, I'm coming for this, I'm coming for this podium before I get in trouble. If I do an inventory, let me, let me come off before. So thank God for the few yes, 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 yes. who recognize that it's God who placed them. Yes, yes, yes. And it's God who positioned them. Yes, 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 yes. And they're bringing others, brothers and sisters in the kingdom alongside to the top. Creating employment, yes, yes. positioning them according to their um, capacity and educational uh, um, 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 outflow. Hallelujah. The, the body of Christ must take care of his whole soul. Yes. We must, and there are persons who are not advancing the interests. They have been positioned to advance the interests of the kingdom, but not only the kingdom, but they've been positioned to let God's kingdom come. And his will be done in their roles. Some of the ear to the king. My father, what a privilege yes. to have the ear to the king. Wow. I'm going to get in trouble there. Let me, let, me, let, let, me, let me close off. Hallelujah to God. So I'm going to, I'm going to close off strong. Hallelujah. You are positioned by design. Here it is now. Your placement, maybe, your placement is for a season. Oh, my father. This is deep now, you know. So you're in, a, you're in a job. You're in an employment. You're in a school system. In an organization. You have to prayerfully distinguish and discern whether God has placed you or positioned you in that role for a season. You, you have, to, have to understand that and distinguish and, disc and, and then determine whether it is for a season. Because it may not be for posterity. It may not be for posterity. What do I mean by that? Posterity means generational. Posterity means forever. There are some persons I use in a church context. Because I'm looking hard. I'm looking hard. I have reason why I'm looking hard. Because I try to go to another message. But this one has been pregnant with me. Like all pastors have been pregnant for many months. With the law of the wise. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. I'm looking hard. Glory to God. I say your placement may be for a season. Glory to God. Not necessary for posterity. There's some persons placing some job by God, by design, to facilitate his plans and purposes for a season, not forever. So you have to understand that when you are exiting, you have to prayerfully distinguish why are you exiting. Let me try a revelation. There's a possibility that you're exiting because while you are in the position, you are complaining. You are saying, boy. What, God, what we do so? Why so much opposition? 
You know, what, 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 why, why people just don't like me? God, I, I've been praying and I'm asking you to intervene. Are you not doing anything? So you're complaining. You're just saying, God, I, I, I need to come out of this place. I need to come out of this position. This, and, and what you say is what you get. Yes. What you keep saying is what you get. What you sow is what you reap. Now you're exiting the role. You're, not, you're exiting in, in a condition which you never planned for. And you're even blaming God even more. Not realizing that your complaining has gone up to God as a memorial. As an institution. So there are some persons losing some strategic jobs. And strategic placement in the kingdom. Because of the mouth. And their, and, and their attitude, because up to now they don't fully comprehend why they were placed in those strategic roles. Rabba Kashaka, Rabba. So we have to understand now why, we, listen, when you're placed and positioned, glory to God, is it for a season? Not for posterity, forever, forever. Glory to God. Hear this now. Let me draw a revelation. You have to understand that there's some environment, there's some position, there's some roles. It's not in your best interest to stay in there forever. Let me look hard and come off. Yeah. Why? Hear this now. You can never get bigger than the aquarium you're in. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let me look hard and come off. You can never get bigger than the aquarium as a fish, as a goldfish. You can never expand more than the environment. Yeah. Glory to God. So you could get so emotional about where you are. There's going to come a time when God said, where you are, you have now become overqualified for that environment. Glory to God. But God knows that you're not going to willingly leave that environment because you see it as the real deal. You see it as a status role. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you'll never become larger than that environment. You can't become more larger as a fish than the environmental him. So sometimes some things happen so that you have no choice but to exit that environment. <laughs> but you need to understand that God has a bigger plan. Right, right, right. Because where you are, you cannot go further. In fact, there are some of us, there are some environment that if we stay in there, we will die. Let me, let, me, let, me get, let me get harder and then come off the, the floor. Hallelujah. There are some workplaces that you're in. Because it's you alone, dear. You never bring nobody else in the kingdom to work at that place. I just you alone. Your, your prayer, well, you're not praying, you're only complaining. <laughs> so those who work in Obia and Nicromancy and those who doing voodoo and those in lodges and so on, all of them gang up coming against you. <laughs> So sometimes God has to provide a way of escape, but you don't see it as a way of escape. You see it as God has failed you. God has failed you. God has allowed you to save your life. Yes. You better give thanks that you left without a big foot. Yes. <laughs> Let me come off a person podium because that's too deep for some people. True. Glory to God. There's some environment you get overqualified for those environment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It, 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 why, why, why am I being so controversial, Carl? Why are you being so controversial? In 1 Samuel 16, verse 17 to 19, I just made the reference to the scripture and then close off. In 1 Samuel 16, 17 to 19, David was playing. David was playing. David was playing, playing music to Saul. Hallelujah. Then David got overqualified. Hallelujah. But listen now, David wouldn't volunteer to exit Saul's environment. What happened? It was when Saul tried to kill him. What a revelation. <laughs> Hear this now. It was when Saul tried to kill him that he fled. Hear this now. As long as Saul was playing music, to, to, as long as David was playing music, you know, la 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 bye, you know, rock on my boat on the treetop, David will never become king. Never become king. Glory to God. David became overqualified in playing la 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 by to, 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 to King Saul. But listen to the things said now. Saul tried to kill him. Yeah. David don't recognize that there was a means of escape supernaturally. 
It was when he fled that he ended up in the wilderness, learning how to be a warrior, build his own army. Years after, the very same people called him back and said, we want you to be my king. So there are some of you, management is throwing arrows at you, and you're like an idiot to run back. Forgive me. Me, me, me deep, me deep, me deep, me deep, me deep. Me deep, me deep, me deep. You better thank God that you exit that environment. Not even you. You better thank God that God allowed things to flex a certain way. You don't even know how you exited. You, 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 you can't tell anybody why you, you exited. It's a way of escape. Because the environment you're in, you could have not gotten bigger in that environment. God allow you to exit that environment. You look away and, and, you, and you, you, you feel away because of status, situation and thing. But don't watch that. Look at the future. God is working things out. Your future is brighter than the past. God is placing you into a bigger ocean, into a bigger sea, into opportunities to manifest. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. <laughs> I have much more to give you, but it's too controversial. <laughs> Rabbi Shanda, so let's bring closure because I was going somewhere which I don't have the license for. It's just a learn as I have. So let me not go there. Glory to God. Want me to draw another revelation to get controversial? Hallelujah. No, let's close off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because there's some of you you want to set me up. Yeah. Because some of you have been praying and asking God to send an answer. I, I brought a word. That you're positioned by design. <laughs> and where you are, you need to advance the plans and purposes of God. Whether for a season, you either call to a first season, or God position you to a man or a woman, a manager or a manageress. Or to an institution, here it is now, or to a nation. I've not even gotten into that. So you have to see your roles and distinguish why God placed you and what you should do in that role. And don't get emotional when, oh, where am I going here? Don't get emotional when persecution is coming. Because yeah. <laughs> it must come. Yeah. Right, right, right. The born again believer strives and persecution. You try the, the apostles. It's when persecution come, they spread and expand, and the gospel went throughout Asia and beyond. There's some of you, you will never grow where you are. <laughs> Why am I getting controversial? <laughs> I can go tell you, there's some environment. You will never be able to advance that environment because the system said, especially if it's a governmental system or so. You, you, you could have bright, God could give revelation to like, you know. You will never have to change. So sometimes God allows some things to happen. Yeah. To take you out of that aquarium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the, the, all the anointed teaching by a pastor and pastor and so on. As, as, we, as, we, as we impregnate with it. Then God has to create environment for it to manifest. Yes, yes, yes. yes sir, amen. Cool. But some of us will never move. Unless persecution come. Because when it comes, we have no choice but to move. There's some job we're in, we think it's the real deal. Not realize there was a training ground. Mm. Whoa. That's deep, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking one more minute because I'm controversial tonight. There's some of you, you have years of experience in public system and so on. You can become a consultant, but you'll never become a consultant. You'll always be a civil servant. Where the pension can't even pay your, your, your car maintenance or your car note after you, after you, after you what? Retire. Hear this now? So sometimes some things happen in the workspace. Are you there saying, how come this is happening? And sometimes you, get, you have to exit that environment, not by choice. Not realizing that you will never become a consultant because you're not going to volunteer for it. It's when you exit the environment, whether by, whether by persecution, whether by, whether by whatever management say I must go home. 
It is then that you chip into your skill set. It is then that you start a business. It is then to start a consultancy. It is then to start to manifest the giftings and talents in your life. It is then when you enlarge. That's when you transform. That's listen, 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 listen. But you are complaining. Roboko shaka. But under the grace of a person, pastor, I come to say you are strategically positioned. Wherever you are, distinguish why you're there. Yes. And be the best. Yes. Because I've learned that your gifts will make room for you. Because man can never promote you. Man can never promote you. They can write a recommendation for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But they can never promote you from the pit. Hallelujah. To the palace. Only God. Give God praise. Give God praise. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. What a time to sow seeds. What a time to challenge God. What a time to prove him. What a time to say, God, I, I need direction going forward. I, I need to know where I should be. I need to know what I should be involved in. I need to know the roles I'm in presently. What is the plans and purposes? How many persons I should bring to the top? You know, Daniel, I love of Daniel. When Daniel was promoted, Daniel brings Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they band together. Because a threefold cord cannot be easily broken. Look how much person in the church, well, not in this church, but how much person would need some employment at a certain level. So the skill set and management skill can come out. Wow. You know, and when we pass them, all we say, God bless you. <laughs> you are in that position to make a way for your brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's close off now. So it's a great time to challenge God and say, God, God, I, I need to get your attention because I need to have a clear future. In my case, I told God, listen now, I need favor to be in my life. I need divine, uncommon favor. I was on the apostles' kingdom ministry in those days. Where I'm from, radio can hardly pick up in those days. In, where I'm from, Black and white TV was the real deal in those days, uh, way back. You had, you had color TV, you know. But based on the antenna system, it just couldn't pick up. So they work with the black and white. So I wasn't exposed like you, who owned a person past a kingdom teaching. Dear him, dear out, dear him, dear out, dear him, dear out. I said to God, show the nations of the earth, I need favor. Favor, I need divine and common favor. Oh, Father, to be resident in me for the rest of my life. Hallelujah. I never just talk, mouth talk. I never talk a bugger mouth. I release an uncommon seed faith sacrifice. I we talk, when we talk about sacrifice. It's something that you feel. When you release a sacrifice, you must question should I end up at the five star hotel on Bellevue, Jamaica, West Indies? Mm -hmm. You know the five star hotel mm -hmm. on Windward Road in, Jam in St. Andrew, Jamaica, West Indies. That's where people go when they say, But did I lose my mind? I release an uncommon seed faith sacrifice of no, of no just under 2,000 US. It was around 2,000 US, but after the transaction fee, it became 1,900 and, so, and some change, just below 2,000 US. I release that seed into the kingdom and I put an assignment. Lord, favor, divine, uncommon favor. Favor must be a portion. Those who know me know that I attract favor. Even people don't like me. I preach like this. The more I preach like this, is the more people love me. Is the more people love me because favor is on my life. Because I sowed a sacrificial seed. Not a play play seed. Not something when I release it, I can live without. It's something when I release it, as a God, you have to come true. Favor. Over the years, such uncommon favor has reached my life in different areas of my life. I challenge you where we are through the nations of the earth. Oh, as I talk about you are positioned by design. I want you now to release a seed, a sacrificial seed, and say, God, I need clarity. I need to know where I'm at. What's my role? How should I manifest your plans and purposes? 
I need to know what's the way forward, what I should be involved in. I need clarity. Come to my gifts, my talents, my placement. I'm challenging you to release a seed, an uncommon seed, a seed that will go up to God as a memorial and change your life story. Glory to God. For those internally, get ready to respond to the ushers. For those throughout the nations of the earth, you go to gwithja.com. Hallelujah to God. And click on the donate button. Hallelujah. And in that box, you indicate a sacrificial seed. You can give it a name. You can give it a destiny seed. I love that name. Yes, man. Destiny seed. What your destiny? You're determining that where you're going, you want God to guide you, direct you. Those who are in roles and position management is a great time to sow seed. Great time because I can tell you, opposition will always face you. Because you're there because God placed you there. You need a seed to be working on your behalf, to be interceding on your behalf, to be there going before you, to war on your behalf. A battle seed, a battle seed. I'm talking to some managers, assistant managers, managers in training. Release a battle seed to fight on your behalf, to fight against the necromancies, to fight against witchcraft, to fight against obia, fight against the large system. Yes, man, release, release a battle seed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Likewise, we encourage persons to release your tithes and offering, which is 10% of your receivables. And of course, your first fruit and any other substance that God has commanded you. I want to bless you right now. Glory to God. I want to bless you right now. Let's lift your right hand as we bless you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And we give a praise. Throughout the nations of the earth, lift your cards, lift your envelope. Let's trust God right now. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Father, for being a God of miracles, a God of suddenly Thanks for this word in season. We bless the people because they are positioned by design. Positioned to bring honor and glory to your name. We are thankful, Lord, for those who are releasing from their aquariums. That the oceans of favor is receiving them in the mighty name of Jesus. Expansions are the portion. Reassignment, oh Father, in environment that they will manifest the gifts and talents. And your kingdom come and it will be done through their endeavors by trusting you. For those, Lord, who are sowing for a destiny seed who are trusting you to bring clarity in the way forward for their life. Those who want to start businesses, those who want to go into consultancy, those who are basically unemployed presently, they're releasing sacrificial seed. Hallelujah, to get clarity on the way forward. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the knowledge. We bless them in the season beyond. And we decree and declare that they shall be clear that they are positioned by design. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Say, so receive. Say, I receive. Say, I receive. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah.